and welcome to Scale Car Garage. Welcome to part four of molding and casting. And uh, this is uh, this is exciting because what we have is the second pour done for the parts of our Porsche 356 Speedster, and uh, the second pour is now cured. So. Uh, Oh, I can't wait to see how this all turned out. So uh, let's not delay. Let's uh, let's take a look at uh, how well our pores did here at Scale Car Garage. Okay, this is going to be exciting. So if you remember, we have the molds for the photo etch parts. Fingers crossed. The mold for. Uh, the interior of the car. That was our monogram figure. Uh, all of the bits and bobs for the Porsche and of course the body mold. So let's, uh, let's start with the small ones first and then build up to the big one. We're going to demold and see if these things actually, uh, if they turned out. So let's, uh, let's do that right now. And I'm going to need my glasses. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at these. Uh, well, let's do this mold. So here we are for the photo etch parts. Now, when you're demolding the second pour, remember we sprayed release agent all over. And what's really neat is if you watch, you can see how it just, it looks like it's not going to come apart. And you go, oh no, but it does. Let's look. There we go. You see that? See how it comes apart? Isn't that cool? And All right. Well, let's see how our photo etch turned out. I've never done photo etch before. Well, we have some leakage. <laughs> but, well, we may be able to salvage that. Now, when that does happen, remember I mentioned about spraying release agent on the entire mold and then putting the the uh, model or whatever we're we're molding back in and this is why so when you do have because this is a these are very very thin delicate pieces uh, I hope it works but I uh, well you know what you don't know until you cast that's the reality so we're going to remove all of this like so and put this down to the side. I'll continue to do that. Um, hmm. Well, let's see how this photo etch part turned out using our, as we did for the first pour, using a putty knife. See that? Four sides. Side here. Got a little bit of leakage. You can see how it leaked just a wee bit from the uh, hot glue, but not enough that we lost a lot of a lot of silicone. So that's good. All right. And now we can separate the box like so. May as well start at the point of leakage. Do that. Right. There we go. And you can see how that will. Oh, well, so much for that piece of foam core. <laughs> I'm. Uh, there we go. Really quite enthusiastic and impatient and. Well, everything. Here we go. All right. There we are. Now let's. Push this out and see how this photo etch part turned out. And you can see it's separating no problem. And ah, similar, but oh, look at that. Well, you know, we might have a shot here. Might have a shot after all. And you can see how the there was a little bit of overflow. That's no problem, but it didn't seem to. Uh, it didn't seem to move. 
This one actually turned out fairly well. Well, one of these might work. All right. Shall we do our monogram figure? And as you can see, it uh, gee, poured really quite well, didn't it? All right. So let's take this out of its mold. This down. And there we go. There is. We'll put the mold box to the side. Grab some scissors here, do a little trimming. As you can see, it's already separating nicely. There we go. Like that, and like this. And let's see how. Well, there we go. There's our two part mold. The back of the figure, and this will be the front. And did we get any leaks? Uh, no. <gasps> that turned out quite well. There we go. So here's the mold for this 1966 monogram spectator figure, which I think is just brilliant. So we'll put that over there. And put this over here. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That so here really are cool. the parts that we've uh, molded. And what we're going to do is we're going to get underneath here and cut this. And there is the mold for the headlights. Actually, that molded really well. Let's trim this. There we go. Right. Over there. I think this turned out really well. There are the headlights. Nicely done. Oh, that turned out really quite, turned well. Out quite well. Nicely done. The figure. Oh, my, my, my. I think that turned yeah, out quite nicely. Over here. We have our racing steering wheel. Yes. Nicely done. My goodness. Steering wheel turned out quite nicely. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Very, very pleased. There we go. The release agent is so cool. And we have the boot cover. The boot cover for the back of the car. And you can see our locking pins there for this part. No leaks. Wow. That has really turned out well. And let's do this one next. It's in between here. There we go. You can see. These are the arms for the figure, which a little bit of silicone seeped onto the part here, which you just take that right off, like so. Yield here. There we go. See how the windshield turned out? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, that's. I hope that I think that's going to be a lovely, lovely. And these are the two bumpers. So let's uh, let's see how they turned out. We did have a little bit of leakage here, but uh, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. Well, so therein lies the parts of parts for the car. Well. Shall we do the body? Let's do it. Okay, folks, this is what I've been waiting for. Let's see how our second pour did. Well, I know we, uh, we put a bead of uh, hot glue around the mold box, just in case, because I, I didn't want it to sort of leak in. And it, and it kind of paid off. You can see some of it went to one side, because of course it's not, uh, not exactly level and square, but uh, let's uh, 
Let's take a look and see what we've got here. All right. All right. So, let's take it out of our mold box here. And let's hang on to the mold box for for a moment because we might use this when we're casting. Um, haven't really decided yet, but uh, let's put it to the side. And here we have a little bit of a little bit of seepage, but nothing too much. And you can see it's gone over here a little bit. So let's uh, lift this flap up. And again, this is why we sprayed. This is why we sprayed release agent over the entire block of silicone. Uh, especially with the body out, uh, just in case, as you saw with the other parts, sometimes we got a little bit of leakage. And you can see how nicely the silicone separates from the silicone because we sprayed it with release agent. Okay, and you can see this is tearing quite nicely, which is fine. We're going to take the excess off here. All right. Nice and easy. That's it. Goes here. Yep. Yeah, we're in good shape. Okay, very good shape here. And on the end as well. There we go. Um, we can use some of this, but that's. Uh, let's see how this comes out. There we go. We didn't get too much leakage, and you can see how this is how the body will pop out once we do the casting. All right, a little bit of leakage over here, through here. Oh my goodness! Wow. Oh my goodness, that actually a little bit on the edges here. I don't know if you can see that. See, there's a little bit on the edges. Take that off. And I, th oh, a little bit over here, you can see, just a wee bit, not much, a wee bit around this edge, and a wee bit around, wow, my, 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 that has turned out very, very well. And uh, so let's put that down for a sec over here and take a look inside if we have some no. Oh my goodness. That turned out really, really well. A little bit, but... Because if you do get some leakage, you just take your finger and it will roll off. And uh, a little bit, but not that much. My, my, my. Well. Let's see how uh, how well this plug will come out of the body here. That's always a telling sign, isn't it? Yes, nice and easy. Let's take the front out first here. And oh, oh right, yes, of course we have the blocks for the body mounting that we have to be very, very careful of. Wow. See if that'll compress enough to get the body out. Let's hope. If not, we'll have to alter, have to make little incisions and so forth, but that is a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, well, let's take that off. Got a little bit of leakage there. No problem with the front coming out. No problem with the back coming out. It's these blocks we're going to have to have a bit of a wrestling match with. Right, oh, no problem. Now let's be patient and see how they come out. There it is. Okay, wow. If we can get one side out, we can get the other side out. You can see that, it's coming out slowly. 
There we go. Slowly. And there we go. There we go. Look at that. A little bit of leakage there. We can touch that up. <laughs> Look at this. That is lovely. Oh my goodness, that is just lovely. What we're going to do is make, uh, make this attachment a wee bit stronger here. Cut that out a wee bit, as you can see. And there we go. Make this attachment very strong. We're going to put a 45 degree angle there. So not only will it be strong, hopefully it'll be easier to demold. Like so. There we go. Little cut there. And that is where the nice. Okay. Oh, and this side. Right. Okay. Again. Let's do a little forty-five degree cut. And we hopefully we'll have a nice strong mounting block there. See that? And that will now be part of the body. Well, well, well. This is going to be lovely. Well, here we have our body mold. Now, if we wanted to, we could just go right ahead, pour some resin in here, and see what we get. But if we really want to extend the life of our mold, and you know, it's it's nothing is of course in, in singularity. It's a combination of things that we have done so far to extend the life of our mold. One is that we've made the walls much thicker than necessary uh, in all aspects of this mold. The other factor that we could, uh, or, or or process, I should say, that we can. Employ, uh, um, employ here to extend the life of our mold is to actually put this in our toaster oven at 100 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. What does that do? Well, uh, if you take a little whiff, hmm, you can smell the silicone. What you're really smelling is actually the alcohol still evaporating from the silicone. Um, we want to evaporate as much of that alcohol as possible, and to do that, we're going to use our toaster oven at 100 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. So let's just put our molds in our toaster oven. So this is an ordinary toaster oven. It actually has a convection toaster oven, and uh, has a wonderful little tray. Now we're going to put our molds on the tray like so, and put them in the convection oven. So let's get all our molds on here. Let's do that right now. All right. So we're really prioritizing the car molds first, and always start with the big, biggest molds on your tray first, uh, and then work the smaller molds around it. There we go. So far, so good. I think we might be able to fit everything on the tray. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, you don't want them really touching, of course, uh, although they inevitably might touch, but you most certainly want them to have uh, some space to allow the air to circulate around them. It's a bumper. Uh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, look at this. We can put our monogram figure, no problem. Move the small ones first. As I said, you want to do big rocks and then small rocks. I think I didn't think the I didn't think the monogram figure would fit, but it is going to fit. Um, let's just put that over there. Uh, there's the female figure here beside it. This is so so cool. All right. Here is the other half of the monogram figure. There. This is all going to. This is all going to fit. This is lovely. Just lovely. Go. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Look at that. This is all going to fit. How wonderful. Okay. 
making sure that they don't really touch that much. Okay, I'll move the body over a little bit. Don't forget the lights. The lights can go over here. Oh, I don't, oh, they can go over here, actually. There we go. Lights. Steering, race, racing steering wheel. And the stock steering wheel. Uh, I rotate this like this. There we go. It's a bit of a picture puzzle, really. That, and like that. We're ready to put them in the oven. Let's put them in the oven. All right. Oh, it's like a baking show. It all fits in. There we go. Plug in my toaster oven. And I've got it set to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we're just going to leave that overnight, come back, and uh, we're going to do the first casting. Okay, so we've let... 24 hours pass with these wonderful molds, I hope, um, in the oven at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're going to do is, um, oh, by the way, while they were uh, being cured, I set up our uh, workstation for, <sighs> believe it or not, we're going uh, to cast some parts. So let's take these molds out of our oven. Uh, I've, le I've let them cool, by the way. Let them cool down. Yeah, I know 100 degrees doesn't sound like much, but still. Uh, and as you can see... <laughs> boing! That's a lot of rubber. <laughs> All right, so let's put it on the workbench, and let me show you how I've set up uh, our workbench to begin trying these out to see, uh, see what kind of parts we're going to get. All right, so you can see I put a fresh piece of wax paper on the workbench. Uh, we have two little mini cups set up with uh, pipettes, and that is because the resin also comes in a part A and a part B. So we want to keep the pipettes separate. Um, a little tip, these pipettes actually are so top heavy, they actually tip these little cups over. I put a little piece of looped masking tape underneath uh, to secure the cups to uh, the green tape that holds down the wax paper, and it works quite well. We have even more pipettes because we'll need pipettes to uh, put the resin in the molds. And we have stir sticks. Um, now these stir sticks are quite large, especially since really we're, we're going to be using these three ounce cups um, for resin because you really don't need a lot of resin. Um, and these are really quite large. So what I tend to do is I will take a pair of scissors, believe it or not, and just cut them in half, like so. And now you've got two stir sticks. So uh, just getting a little economical there, just a little, little tip. But um, this is fun. Um, let's also Remember that we need our rubber gloves, and especially for resin, you do not want to get resin on your skin at all. So, um, long sleeves, as we did with the silicone rubber, and rubber gloves. And uh, I will show you, let's put on the rubber gloves here, and uh, I'll show you on the floor where I have the uh, two jugs of resin uh, ready to shake, and uh, we'll take a look at those. The other thing we have to do actually is um, charge up our compressor, get our compressor filled with air. And well, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me show, show you why. Hey, let me show you why. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of crouching a little low. Here is how I store my uh, resin, uh, both part A and part B. It, it just um, helps keep it, well, as fresh as possible. It's basically in a plastic bag and a twist tie. All right, here we go. Like so, and this is actually the part B. I usually um, draw this out first because it's actually more viscous than part A. So I do it in a bit of a reverse order, but it doesn't really matter. So that is part B. 
and here is part A. Just get this ready for you. Apologies. But I wanted to show you every step of the way. And as you can see, it's this is part A. I usually decant A before B, and uh, that's how that goes. This wonderful device is, let's put this to the side here, excuse me, is our pressure pot. And it sounds really fancy, but really what this is, is a, a paint pot used by um, auto body shops. And they put a paint can in here and they pressurize the, uh, the pot and then use it to spray, spray cars and, and, or trucks in large volumes. It is a great way to um, cast under pressure. And generally speaking, because we're doing body parts and we'll do a figure, sorry about the loud noises there, we're going to cast at about 20 PSI for 20 minutes. So uh, let's, uh, let's try our molds. Okay, folks, let's go big or go home. We're going to try the body mold and see how well that works. Just a word of caution. The first time you use a mold, it will not turn out perfectly. If it does, then the modeling gods are smiling upon you. Um, but we'll see, uh, we'll see what we get with this, uh, with this, uh, with this mold. But let's, let's try the body first because I can't wait. I don't know about you folks, but I can't wait. Sometimes you pour a little more resin than you think you need. So it's always nice to have a backup um, mold so you don't waste any resin. And I thought a good uh, backup mold for us would be this uh, monogram figure from 1966 that we, uh, we made a mold of. So let's begin. Ah, fingers crossed. Uh, compressor's all ready to go. Here we go. All right. Wow. Uh, uh. Okay. So let's put this to the side here. This to the side here. We have our stir stick. We will need a pipette. And let's do the, as I said, we do usually do B first. You want to give it a shake. There we go. Open that up. And there we go. And we're going to do uh, how many pipettes? Well, let's try four of each. Four of each. I know it's more than we need. It's more than we need, but let's let's do four of each. One, there's two, three, and four. There we go. Now, one of the things I really uh, like to do when I'm casting is to put a little bit of a tint in the resin. And the reason you do that is um, if you don't, the resin is absolutely white and imperfections uh, or air bubbles are, are, are hard to, to see. But we should put a little bit of tint and it's just black tint. Um, and the easiest way to get this into the resin, you can, you, it's like an eyedropper, you can drop it in, but I find it a little easier to just put a little, because you don't need much to get gray, because we want this to be gray. Just put a little bit on your stir stick like that. Close this up. And oh my goodness, does, uh, does this tint stain? Oh, oh. As you can see, I'm trying not to get it on my gloves, but inevitably, well, you do. Um, yeah, uh, it's always good to have lots of paper towels handy. So as you can see, and we did four pipettes, and I know it looks very dark, but um, w once it once it sets, it'll it won't be that dark. It'll probably be a gray of some sort. Oh, oh see, there's a little bit left in the pipette there. There we go. Let's stir that in, and it's always best to put the tint in before you put the second part of the resin in. Uh, that way you can make sure it's nice and uh, uh, dispersed within 
the resin. All right, so now we need part A, which we use second, but uh, this is going to be a little difficult to open. There we go. All right. Got that open here. Back. <laughs> it does uh, seal quite well. It's, we've shaken this already. Give it a little shake. And remember, we want to use the other pipette, <laughs> and we need four pipettes. So let's uh, make sure we get four pipettes in. One. Two. Three. And four. Now this does set up rather quickly. You've got maybe about eight minutes before it starts to starts to cure. So let's uh, we take our time, but we act uh, swiftly. Let's say, and you don't really have to stir it up a heck of a lot. That is probably all you need. The excesses, stir stick away. Now let us put the resin in our mold. And I like using a pipette because we have things like, uh, oh gosh, a whole bunch of things to get in. Sure. Now you can pour it in, like so. And I'm also going to make sure that, see we've got sides here that need to be filled up. So make sure those sides are filled up. I'm going to use all of this actually, I think. And if it oozes out, so be it. Let's put it in and see what happens here. See if uh, it might make a mess, but let's uh, let's see here. Oh, and it did. That's okay. That's all right. Well, that's actually a good amount. So let's get this in the pressure pot. All right, and this is a good time to take your gloves off. You're going to go through a few uh, a few pairs of gloves doing this. All right. Got it in the pressure pot, and we want to do up the pressure pot, as you can see. And it's kind of opposites first. Okay, and you just want it snug because there's a nice O-ring that uh, gets compressed to hold the pressure in. And then we use our ball valve to put 20 PSI of pressure in our tank. Do we have any leaks? No, we're, we're solid. Very good, very good. So there we go, we've got 20 PSI and we're gonna leave it for 20 minutes. And we'll come back and see how our first pull of our body mold turns out. All right. All right, so we've given it, uh, well, a little more than 20 minutes, but uh, let's just see. Uh, we're gonna release the air from the pressure pot, slowly. Hear that? And now let's open up the pressure pot. Corners at a time. First one. Here we go. All right. And, oh dear, wow. Here it is. Let's, uh, let's take this over to the bench and see how our first pull turned out. Okay, so here it is. Let's demold and see what we get. Here we go. Let's take off the flash here. Throw that away. All right. So, I'm going to hear that. Ooh. We'll know instantly if we uh, something something here. We separate everything here. Okay. 
out comes a Porsche 356 Speedster. And as you can see, we've got uh, a little, little bit of an air bubble there. Uh, but uh, overall, huh, my goodness, this has turned out, <laughs> this has turned out so well. My goodness. My, 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 look at this. <gasps> Wow, so now let's take the, uh, the flash off and grab some, some tweezers and you just grab the flash here and you see how it comes off all the way around. And carefully here, while it's on the, uh, while it's in its mold, it's, it's a good idea to get the flash off. There we go, okay, throw this flash away. And we have the Porsche body. Wow. Wow. I'm just... Oh. Now the other thing is just how, uh, how lovely this, uh, this, this plug worked as well. So now we have to remove... Oh, I see another, another little air hole there in the back. So we have one in the back and one on the fender. I'm trying to find others and, well, quite frankly, I think we're in pretty good shape here. All right, well, oh my goodness. My goodness gracious. Okay, well, let's see if we can get the, uh, remember we have the sides here that we have to contend with, which are the uh, mounts for the chassis. So let's just take our time and get some air in there, as you can see. And hopefully, slowly and carefully, take this off and get our body out. Here we go. And there's one side. There we go. And there is, oh, the blocks turned out really well as well. Wow. There it is. Uh, our first pull. And it turned out quite nicely. My goodness. Now let's get this, um, this block here. And you just put a little bit of pressure and it should just separate like this, as you can see just separates like so. A little bit of pressure. <sighs> wow, and there's one in the back for the grill. Okay, push that one through. And there is our Porsche 356A Speedster. My goodness. Well, folks, I hope you're as pleased as I am. I mean, there's our Porsche. Look at this. It's just lovely. I mean, oh. All right, on to the other parts of the car. Now, if you remember, we molded a lot of these parts in one big batch. But one of the reasons we left so much distance between the parts was so we could separate them using a number 11 X-Acto knife. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to separate out these molds uh, like so, being very careful. Cutting them. All right. Like so. As you can see, it uh, separates quite nicely. Here we have the steering wheels, and I'm just going to put it on the edge of a the my workbench here and slice through. There we go. Do 
the same thing for the back here. this point right here and now there are the molds for the steering wheels the competition steering wheel and the stock steering wheel which uh, actually turned out quite well so I'm just going to keep slicing and dicing here so that we have our molds and they're good to go all right here we go. Let's just keep slicing here. Okay, make sure that we have. And there we go. We have our molds separated. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, we've separated our molds. Let's start casting. All right. I'm going to put eight in. Let's see how we do with that. Two parts in here. Shouldn't take too much resin, really. Get a little. and put this in our pressure pot for casting. Oh, the boot cover, of course, yes. Can't forget the boot cover. That and let it ooze out. There we go. Into well, we made a little pressure too much pot. resin, but that's all right. Yeah. That's okay. Better too much than not enough. So let's get the top of the pressure pot on. It's in the pressure pot, folks, and uh, let's wait another 20 to 30 minutes and see how our parts turn out. Okay, so let's get the uh, parts for the 356A Speedster out of the pressure pot, and let's see how they turned out. Okie dokie. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Wow. All right. Well, we have quite the uh, quite the number of parts here, don't we? Oh, this is exciting, 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 exciting. Uh, all right, here we go. Well, hmm. Let's try the let's try the figure first and see what we got here. So, part here. Oh, look at that. Nice. Turned out quite nicely. And just take the flash off here, all the way around the figure. Like so. Well, this figure turned out really quite nicely. Well, all right. 
and put it over there and let's uh, see how the arms for the figure turned out oh my goodness these look quite nice as well pull the flash off and wow I'm really delighted with the way these turned out. There we go. go. And the boot cover. Oh my goodness, the boot cover is just lovely. That turned out very, very nicely. Yes, very nice indeed. So here we have the, the body. Let's see if the the boot cover actually fits on. Look at that. The interior will fit in. There's the uh, spot for the dashboard. Dashboard fits on. We've got parts that will absolutely work. So let's, uh, let's tidy these parts up and see what it'll look like. I... Okay, so we've got the uh, solid resin casting going. Uh, now we have clear parts to cast. And what I use for clear is, um, again, it's liquid plastic. It's smooth cast 326, and it's a color match with medium setting. So it does take longer to set, uh, which is good. Uh, it does have some negative attributes in that you have to really let this set overnight in half of the, um, the mold, but I will show you that. So let us talk about what we're going to cast in clear. We have our headlights, headlight lenses to be more specific. There's our two part mold and it's going to go like this and into the pressure pot. So we have our headlights and we have, you can see that, that is the windshield. And that's the front of the windshield. This is the back of the windshield here. There we go, you can see that. And it goes in like so. So these are the two molds that we're going to used to make our clear parts. So uh, let's get to it. I've already set up um, pipettes for the, uh, the 326 uh, clear resin and we'll need a cup and a stir stick. So I may have forgot to mention but uh, once we put um, the clear resin in these parts. These will be cast on, at 30 PSI. The other parts that we did was, they, we used about 20 PSI, 21, 22. These have to be cast at a higher pressure to really make sure that we get all the bubbles out. So let's, uh, I just thought I'd mention that now. <laughs> all right, so here we go. And again, I always start with the, uh, the part B because it's, it's thicker and we don't need too, too much of this stuff, I don't think. Okay. You can see how, how viscous it is. It really, whoops, really is quite thick. There's one. I don't think it'll take very much. So we're gonna do two pipettes of, of each A and B. There's two. And I know this is part A, but you can hear it's not as viscous. So I usually do this, and this is the hardener in the second. Uh, okay, need two of these. There we go. 
sure we get every last drop in. So put this, the rest of this in. And let that come up a little bit. Close this up. All right. And start stirring. Again, we want to stir, making sure that we scrape the sides of the vessel of our container. There we go. Make sure we don't waste any there. And you can see it really does, well, it foams up once you start stirring it. It also gets a wee bit warm. And I think we're good. You can see it's absolutely clear. Let's take our pipette and we'll do the windshield first. that we're all good here okay it's all good there we go and put it right down here see I'm just placing it in the windshield here making sure that we get a good amount and a good amount around the edges here there we go so we've got lots of product in here. Hopefully we'll get a nice cast. We'll see how this all works out. There's first one. And now the headlights. And you see I left the sprue on so that there would be a, a reservoir of, of resin, if you will. And then on the back here. And we'll put these on like so. All right, let's put this in, in the pressure pot. All right. Let's put the top on the pressure pot. here. All right. And we're going to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to put the pressure up to 30 psi. Remember to tighten in a cross pattern, that really helps. There we go. Here's the valve. Let's increase this to 30 psi. Thirty psi, and now we wait at least an hour. It's kind of like eating and then going swimming. Nah, this is more fun. Okay, it's been one hour, so uh, let's depressurize the pot and see how our clear parts look. Let's do that right now. Okay, let's go over here. Pardon me. <laughs> Bing bang bong. And depressurize. Here we go. And we can open this up like so. All right, and we will take our parts out. Put this back here. Okay, so let's take them out and see how they turned out. Okay, so here they are on the workbench. Let's take a look and see how they uh, turned out. 
Now, as I said, we just want to take half of the um, mold off and let the uh, clear part cure for at least overnight in the second part of the mold. So let's see, uh, let's see how these turned out. You can see it's, uh, you see how it's not fully, still kind of goopy, but that's okay. Let's uh, very carefully. Where are the lights? Oh, the lights look good. There are the lights. So we're just going to let this cure. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Cure overnight. And here is, there's the second part of the mold there. Let's leave that there. And here is the windshield. See how this comes off here. And now this will come out. Oh, there's the windshield. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. You can feel how smooth that is. Wow. Okay, so oh, we are just going to let that cure overnight and uh, take it from there. So far, so good. So, uh, boy, I feel like casting a whole fleet of, uh, of 356s and uh, staging a uh, uh, 50 sort of uh, sports car race. And I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. Anyway, as you can see, We've come a long way. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for uh, watching this. And if you have any questions, by all means, put them in the comments. Feel free to skip search, as I always uh, suggest, to the parts that you find most interesting and, and, and most uh, relevant to you. Um, anyway, I'm blubbering. So uh, thank you so much for joining me here at Scale Car Garage. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.